Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Studio Ray again. And from now on, we are initiating the cycle of uh, programs uh, that uh, for the whole year will be broadcast uh, once per month. And we will uh, talk about the uh, restoring uh, trust or rebuilding the trust uh, as they speak today in uh, Georgian Abkhazian, and Georgian Ossetian relationships. And uh, uh, during the cycle of the program, we will uh, meet to civil activists um, who are closely involved together with Abkhazian Ossetian organizations uh, in terms of execution of projects. And uh, we will talk about the projects as well. And uh, we will uh, discuss the peace process and to what extent uh, human relationships contribute to conflict resolution. Uh, this is the main purpose of uh, that uh, fresh project. And uh, our current program is um, uh, produced uh, under the auspice of uh, United Nations and European Union. And today we are broadcasting the first program of the cycle. And uh, we will touch upon uh, the issues, um, I mean, uh, where these cross points are, uh, where Georgian, Ossetian, and, and Abkhazian citizens could uh, reach certain agreement. So, uh, for that reason, we have invited um, the people actively involved in the process. Um, and uh, let me introduce the Rabindianish Philly. It's a coalition for the rights of refugees, Georgi Hutsishvili, International Center of Negotiations and Cultural Resolutions, and Thomas Chigilishvili, movie documentary a maker uh, who has uh, produced uh, a film, one film or more, Thomas. So far, only one film. Uh, thanks, uh, gentlemen, uh, for coming to us, and uh, uh, we will have. Uh, a reporter from Tsknevala Timur Tsknevala through Skype, and we will uh, speak about the visions, uh, visions from Tsknevala. And we will have similar Skype voiceover from Sukhumi in future as well. Thank you very much, gentlemen, and we are initiating the new cycle of the program. But before we speak about uh, what we have now and what we will have in future, uh, let's uh, briefly uh, describe the uh, peace negotiation, uh, civil negotiations, and uh, we have accumulated pretty long history. And uh, let's talk about our experience for that uh, time. Uh, let me uh, welcome our TV viewers. And uh, certainly, I agree that we have accumulated a long experience. And uh, personally, I have been uh, for 23 years uh, involved since the first uh, shot uh, was made there. And uh, I think uh, most importantly, we have today is uh, human relationships now. And, uh, you know, just relationships, of course, change uh, depending on political reality. Spirits are changeable as well. And, uh, and of course, social and economic processes uh, really impact uh, this uh, process. Uh, it's interesting to know that uh, new people are involved day by day, slowly, and uh, uh, they are getting new experience as well. And it becomes more varied, more various. And, uh, and uh, if we look back on the several years of our activities, uh, we can say that there are a lot of groups involved. Uh, and um, of course, uh, report. Just a lot of uh, reporters are involved, and they work hard, and uh, they cooperate. Uh, yes, of course, from Georgia, from Ossetia, from Abkhazia, and. Uh, of course, there are plenty of projects involving journalists and reporters. We have set up a common website and where we freely post our blogs and ex-combatants about whom Thomas has produced a perfect film, and I'm 
very proud of the movie. And now they're going to start going to launch a new project. I mean, Alsatian and the Georgian ex combatants. Uh, and uh, there are other just uh, youth projects, uh, also just projects uh, to be planned between uh, musicians, dancers, and uh, people of culture. So we will see a lot of groups uh, that has uh, never been involved before. And uh, the protagonists of the movie, uh, they were enemies uh, as early as 20 years ago but uh, in the armed conflict, but right now, just uh, how did you manage to get them close to each other? Well, the movie was uh, produced under the auspice of Coburn Project, uh, and uh, uh, we simply took the opportunity, and within the framework of the project, we made a movie, and uh, due to the movie, just we got these people connected to each other, and the point here is that uh, now uh, people may have been shooting each other for uh, 20 years, but uh, you know most frequently, you know they would become friends afterwards. And in our movie, there are two prototypes: Georgian and Ossetian uh, combatants, and uh, they were first enemies. But after that, uh, they're trying to keep their friendship restore and keep their friendship and personally I was emotionally involved and uh, you know, it's very easy for people to find a common language it's not as not as difficult as it may look so movies about two friends who are trying to keep their friendship that was the fable of the movie and uh, how was the film accepted uh, by those societies uh, where these two people still live? Um, while making the movie, well, we worked with Ossetians, with our partners. And, you know, it was even easier to express ourselves. Uh, and, uh, well, it seemed to me that uh, as if I was making a movie to somewhere in Georgia. And no issues in Ossetian or Georgian villages. Uh, so the film was done so fast that it surprised even myself. And uh, after the draft was watched by the partners on the Ossetian side, of course, just we try to avoid some sharp points, but uh, nobody even just expressed any doubt or suspicion. film was uh, very warmly welcomed emotionally. Uh, yes, that was uh, demonstrated, of course, introduced in uh, Tsrin Valley. Yes, we do that, and after the demonstration, we discuss uh, the points of the film. And uh, sometimes I send uh, links uh, to our partners. Uh, and uh, of course, the film is being accepted emotionally and objectively. And everybody sees himself in the movie. Everybody sees his own or her own problems. And uh, now, whose side is watching? You know, it's not important any longer. The film is perfectly done. And uh, now, uh, everyone's attitude is absolutely similar and equal because there are certain things that unite people. Of course, you know, the main message is that uh, the war has brought nothing good to any side. The film is about uh, people. Uh, Gogi, what do you think when we speak about uh, such emotional and human relationships? And it's easier, it's becoming easier for people to establish friendly relationships. But I think we wouldn't be too right to generalize the formula. Uh, because, you know, the point is that, uh, well, uh, well, we just as a rule, we take in you know, a rather just the sharp and strict principles. We are afraid of uh, being uh, forced ideologically. Just I'll remind you when Studio Ray just uh, demonstrated its movies in Sukhumi. Well, after reaction was uh, rather painful and sharp. I think you do remember that. And uh, and um, now I'll just uh, say a few words about the essence of uh, popular diplomacy. 
And the popular diplomacy can do a lot. And practically, it's a prerequisite to, to transform or resolve any conflict. Without that, it's impossible to solve any conflict, whatever decisions are taken by politicians. And, uh, Rather, when we have negative political decisions, popular diplomacy is even more needed to express uh, people's spirits and uh, strengthen the human ties uh, where just politics is absolutely harmless. But of course, there are certain frames uh, after just uh, that. It's very hard for popular diplomacy to move on unless political processes are contributing. Uh, and of course, the August war catastrophically impacted these relationships. And since then, we have been living in new reality, new status quo, and uh, we have to act in different environment. And all you have heard here is a good example that human relationships are still on and uh, and now it is reflected on uh, group meetings and cultural contexts and it uh, speaks volumes of the thing that uh, there is no more that kind of alienation between Georgians and Ossetians. I mean the alienation that could have been existing and that could have been uh, just uh, predicted uh, because you know, politicians from both sides were contributing to this alienation. But in reality, you know, due to everything, it's much less. But unfortunately, we have a higher degree of alienation with the presidents. And uh, that brings some uh, hope you know, for us. Uh, and it's reflected on the popular diplomacy. But right now, we are in a very hard condition. Uh, when uh, Georgian-Russian dialogue has been launched uh, on uh, that background, uh, both in Sukhumi and Srinvali, uh, things that uh, if uh, the dialogue between Russia and Georgia is successful, that may negatively impact uh, uh, that uh, built uh, pyramids, I mean pyramids of power, economy, politics uh, existing uh, there. If we consider it in a just a much much longer uh, just a term this period will be overcome and we will enter new stage where opportunities open themselves and uh, personally personally you now I would say that uh, well Russian uh, Georgian dialogue should uh, proceed and uh, somewhere uphill that barrier that obstacle I'm sure will be removed. I mean, just obstacles uh, that were created just uh, at the start of our relationships. Uh, do you do you think? Do you suppose that uh, when we have a certain uh, cooperation relationships between? political and uh, civil organizations between power structured political uh, organisms uh, is there any danger that uh, a dialogue uh, should be should be just weakened uh, between us uh, but it depends on what we mean by civil dialogue uh, well, there are certain groups uh, that have you know, constant uh, partners uh, and uh, they meet non-stop with their partners and uh, civil dialogue today in general is interrupted uh, that's a result of war society is divided by barbed wire and there are no means of communication we have to somehow think about restoring it and uh, more and more groups and people should be involved in the process today there is no more dialogue but you now there is a need for this dialogue now even just uh, certain families are divided and people live on both sides of this artificial a boundary and frontier and uh, no, nothing could be worse than that I mean the physical conditions and uh, by all means some alienation would follow if it uh, uh, continues uh, like that of course we are not going to lose our relationships but in general people uh, slowly will get more and more alienated from each other 
and both in Abkhazia and South Ossetia, Georgia is not priority for media for ordinary people. You know, people are there are getting uh, farther and farther from us, and uh, on uh, these uh, mutual meetings, we talk about that. Uh, I mean, uh, reporters talk about that, and people who are working uh, for uh, state structures. Yeah, uh, step by step. Uh, now, their societies are getting more and more distant from uh, Georgian realities. However, uh, they ask for opening up these uh, borders, and they have lack of information, lack of uh, food. Uh, the same situation is in Abkhazia. Now, that would be proper to mention that uh, in uh, some part of uh, Ossetian society, they are still keeping uh, Georgian language. In Skin Valley, you could hear Georgian speech. Uh, in funerals, at weddings, uh, at public places, people uh, speak in Georgian. Well, uh, we are going to just to uh, introduce some commercial, and uh, after that, we will discuss some uh, innovative uh, attitudes uh, towards the conflict situations, just to restore and improve the relationships. Uh, now, commercial, please. We are back at Studio Ryan. This is the first uh, discussion, first talk show of the cycle under the auspice of UN and the European Union uh, within the framework of Coburn Project. And uh, we are talking about the projects uh, that should build and contribute to trust restoration in uh, conflict uh, areas between uh, Georgians, Abkhazians, and Ossetians. So, so uh, Thomas, we were talking about some uh, innovative approaches. And uh, um, do we see that uh, Ossetians are thinking about uh, bringing those relationships into more active uh, stage? or? The current statue of uh, barbed wire and alienation uh, just should move on. Now, well, uh, just I assume that uh, Zurab was absolutely right, uh, speaking that uh, Georgia is no longer a priority for them. Well, they are aware of the Russian armies just uh, along the frontier line, and they are sure that no more war will be. But turned out that they have so many problems of their own that they are simply turned on just resolving those problems. So, but naturally more information uh, should be provided about uh, what's going on here in Georgia. I don't want to sound politically, but until we become interesting for those people, uh, nothing would follow. And if we open these borders, uh, people will be able to communicate more with us and will get to know us, uh, get to know with us even better. And uh, this will impact uh, at every level. More people will come to Tbilisi, to Tskin Valley. And now that that uh, uh, a lot of illegal goods are on sale in Abkhazia. Officially, Georgian food is banned in Abkhazia, but uh, uh, one article, uh, one Abkhazian article uh, just uh, said about uh, this embargo, but uh, uh, he said that uh, their furniture is uh, made in Kutaisi and vegetables and at wedding should be from Kutaisi, from Gori, from Western Georgia. So everything uh, comes there just from Georgia and economically they are attached to us. But I can't say that about Svinvalli. On the other side, uh, uh, well, it's well just a uh, corrupted uh, thing, but uh, well, there are similar relationships, and uh, due to those relationships, people manage to import some goods. Uh, uh, naturally, in Suhumi market, uh, they sell Georgian goods. Well, we are not corrupting anything. Uh, you know, the only thing is that, uh, uh, well, a Russian, um, Russian frontiers man simply making money on the border. 
And if there were similar relationships with the Tsinval, that would be much better. But as far as I know, a lot of people uh, from Abkhazia come for medical reasons. Uh, and a couple of weeks ago, Russian frontiersmen gave a conference with statistics. Uh, and it turns out that uh, uh, they arrest more more ethnical sessions than Georgians, and uh, they take them to Tsrin Valley, extort money, then they let them go. And they arrest more sessions uh, that uh, want to come to our side. Uh, this is the direct uh, policy of Russia, uh, preventing these people from uh, contacting each other. So in Tsrin Valley, they get uh, goods uh, from via Azerbaijan, Vladik, Afghaz, Larsi, and uh, uh, because of the detour, prices are very expensive. Uh, and are there any just uh, uh, even the tiniest uh, leverage or tools in terms of finding uh, uh, just new ways of uh, resolving the conflicts? When we say that there is increasing will between people to establish uh, closer and closer ties, uh, and, you know, this uh, barbed uh, wire simply acquired the important significance of uh, this uh, symbol. Well, uh, right now, the barbed wire serves as the alienation tool. It is activated uh, to contribute to alienation and to uh, make Georgian society think that until we recognize uh, these regions uh, politically, uh, well, they will build uh, something like Berlin Wall. Such is message, current message today. But we are not, you know, well, just forcing upon uh, general spirit is that the uh, door should be opened for further cooperation. And uh, yes, uh, you guys, you have your own idea of the political status, and we have our own idea. And if we uh, can't agree, let's put it away and let's behave the civilized way, just like uh, civilized people do. And let's uh, not uh, close the door to each other. And uh, well, I think that needs, you know, uh, more activities uh, on part of the society, on behalf of the society. I mean, uh, the active part of our society. Of course, it's impossible to uh, involve uh, everybody. Um, no, no, I'm not talking about the referendum or census, but well, it makes no difference. We should, we should fix our position. We should declare our position. And uh, we're uh, saying that we can, uh, well, just recognize our, admit our own mistakes. Uh, but would you just admit your own mistakes too? But if you don't, well, just it's okay too. We will admit our own uh, mistakes. That means that we are rethinking and revelating the principles of our own government. Uh, this should occur in order to break down uh, base walls and, uh, and uh, however they're against that, uh, well, it's not that. That will impact the situation. And now, um, well, uh, the issue is that people need a living space, and when people say that uh, we have better life here than there, I think uh, that's a main turning point. Well, it's just necessary to create political background, and uh, due to August 2008, you know, Russian uh, frontiers men arrest more Asians than Georgians, and uh, why are these barbed wires there? Because Russians need that just to test Georgia to make it more flexible in terms of uh, status recognition, and uh, when they see that uh, Georgia is not getting more flexible, well, hopefully they will uh, change their way of thinking. I am hopeful about that. And you know, I've, I'm closely involved with Abkhazians, and you know, our mentality is almost, uh, almost similar. Uh, you know, at the first uh, uh, meeting, um, you know, they just uh, demanded, uh, demanded of us you know, to recognize to uh, just political Abkhazia. And, 
And uh, we just our answer was that we are reporters. How can we just recognize or not recognize you? And then at the second stage, uh, there was one guy, Guram, and uh, they said that uh, they buried uh, Guram's mother-in-law just just like t- Queen uh, Tamar. And, uh, and it turns out that a lot of uh, Abkhazian associations have interest for Georgia. You know, Abkhazians come here for medical reasons. You know, just uh, drug addiction is a serious problem in Abkhazia, and Abkhazians would ask us, uh, just how do you cure our just drug takers? Uh, I mean, uh, they just come back to Abkhazia absolutely cured. And then they wrote some article uh, just claiming that uh, Georgians and you know, just are especially curing Abkhazians, and... Uh, uh, bringing them back. So it's kind of a theory of uh, plot, you know, some kind of plotting theory. So uh, this kind of uh, spirits of uh, certain groups, uh, so how strong such spirits are, and uh, could these spirits uh, overcome other more militaristic uh, spirits uh, that still exist in uh, both in Abkhazian Association and Georgian society? Well, here we argued or we uh, talked about certain things. And now we should remember that everybody wants a better life. Everyone, everyone thinks of his or her own life and about his or her own family. Uh, everyone wants to have more income, uh, uh, vacation, good jobs. So, and to have better life is just absolutely general aspiration of uh, any person. And 10 years ago, we had some argument in Istanbul, and uh, they just uh, asked about uh, uh, rethinking our past. But I asked, if you have just a goal in front of you and uh, rethinking past behind you, where would you go, just backwards or forwards? They said, of course, we'll go forwards. And now that we had total blackout, but we forgot about that now. Uh, we are thinking about development. We should develop ourselves, both economically, politically. Institutions should be independent and powerful so that all guests who come here should feel that it's not just you know, ostentatiously just done. Well, and the well-being is not just well-painted facades. It should be reflected on each person and its skin valley and uh, so whom we will understand that we have better life here. Why do we need the Western aspirations? You know that uh, we were bought by Coca-Cola and Marlboro because we wanted to have better life. We wanted more freedom. And such aspirations has everybody. And uh, this kind of uh, spirits, you know, is more important and significant. Here, we have to modify and change ourselves as well. We are not an ideal society either. When we are talking about changes, well, it's not necessarily addressed at Abkhazia or organizations only. It should be addressed uh, at own uh, at our own selves. Now, and the carbon project is an excellent tool and opens new opportunities. And uh, one of the priorities is, uh, well, uh, well, developing mutual relationships. Uh, and, uh, of course, it's an important tool to restore a trust. And uh, we have in a lot of stereotypes still since the 90s. And they are still powerful and dominating in our society. and. Uh, our partners in Abkhazia, Asia, can say that well. Now, just we will uh, we will see commercial. Well, now we can uh, directly speak uh, through Skype with. Uh, Timur Tsurbat from uh, Tsinvali. Uh, Timur is ex combatant, and today he is editing the newspaper 21st Century. It's uh, printed media, and uh, uh, we are having an opportunity to talk with uh, Timur about the activities and experience uh, that uh, his organization has accumulated in relationships with the Georgian uh, civil activists. Uh, uh, good afternoon, Tamar. 
Uh, good afternoon. I'm very glad to see you all. Uh, we're uh, speaking of uh, the experience uh, of uh, uh, Georgian Association uh, civic relationships uh, that in parallel to military and the political processes uh, there are similar relationships and uh, and popular diplomacy and uh, what uh, experience have you gathered for these uh, years well we did accumulate the experience but unfortunately it turned out to be unwanted and uh, and uh, you know people uh, battling 20 years ago with each other. Now they understand each other pretty well and they can take uh, not quite standard or like just uh, these stages, but uh, this experience is not wanted by either your or uh, our government. And in other words, uh, both governments are all right with that status quo so that uh, civil societies could not speak to each other. But what is the use for the governments? Uh, well, they introduce these people as, you know, just betrayers, as enemies, uh, and uh, this is advantages for the governments. But where is that advantage for the governments? I'd like to just specify that particularly. Now we are going to have elections, and uh, now just pre-electionary a campaign uh, has already been launched and uh, uh, the governmental structures in uh, South Asia, they do have a real oppositionist parties, real oppositionist movement uh, and uh, introducing the leaders of the oppositions just as traitors and enemies, well, well they just are simply strengthening their own positions. Uh, and uh, strangers may appear now uh, such uh, policy is supported by Georgian side as well. It makes no difference who is in power in Georgia, right? Well, it, it, it seems to me like that, but uh, anyway, you know, give or take is uh, possible when people are able to take an attitude of give or take. I don't think that uh, in uh, Georgia people just uh, relevantly look at that. Yes, there were some favors addressed at Russia, and uh, that's all. And this is, you know, more advantages for the government of South Asia. Uh, and uh, myself, as a representative of civil society, I mean, uh, that phrase uh, is still dominating in, uh, I mean, Occupied territory, but think of think of it yourselves. Occupied territory means that uh, uh, the territory has been handed over to some other power, but Georgia has not been controlling this territory for 20 years. And what kind of occupation uh, can we talk about? You can say that uh, now Asians were occupied, but Asians uh, don't say that. Uh, different thing is uh, Akhalgori region. But it's not occupied either. Well, it belongs to South Association. And do you discuss it in civil forums? Uh, I mean, in terms of cooperation with Georgian civil activists? Uh, I will be quite frank with you and say that uh, directly that uh, I greatly regret to say that the powers uh, just in South Association. Uh, contribute any way they can uh, to preventing uh, civil societies from uh, speaking with each other. And the ordinary uh, man thinks that what's going on on the other side of the border is not interesting for him. And th But there are just uh, my friends, uh, civil society, me personally, uh, who understand that you know, relationships should be re-established with Georgians on uh, new principles, but our government you know, does not contribute to that either. They kind of monopolize the law for motherland, so to speak, and they're not allowing uh, civil society to uh, speak to Georgians, but uh, we are still existing, we have internet accessible, 
and uh, we are of course contradicting and uh, we are hopeful that uh, we will uh, get somewhere um, but so far there are now several groups uh, both in uh, Georgia and South Ossetia uh, who would uh, reach you know just uh, well common ground in our uh, program, Thomas Chegalishvili has talked about the documentary where you were one of the protagonists uh, together with other Georgian combatants uh, with whom uh, you are friends with uh, for uh, many years. First you just uh, were enemies, but then you became friends. That was a scenario, screen version. Uh, yeah, we became friends just, uh, well, during the process. What would you like to know? I'd like to know whether you watched the film or not. Yes, uh, the film was not shown on TV, but we did watch it on DVD. But they didn't show it in Tbilisi either. Uh, we watched it on DVD and uh, um, now everybody, everybody liked the movie, just uh, everybody assess the film positively. Uh, we just the film really appealed to us, uh, to be honest with you. But can you see any resources that uh, uh, civil or just movements are more activated now? Well, I can see different resources uh, about a man. There are human resources. Uh, but there is, of course, uh, hatred too. But there are many people uh, who normally treat uh, normal Georgians, and here is our main resources. Uh, and uh, so far I can't see political cross points, and uh, here I blame to a higher extent Georgians. We don't quite understand what Georgia wants. Uh, we are recognized by one great country, and uh, Georgia just refuses even to call us some cessation. And uh, let's put off the status issue for Georgia and let's uh, start the dialogue. But, uh, well, it's not uh, occurring because Georgia wants us necessarily see just uh, in the territory of Georgia. But uh, let this, well, status thing alone. Uh, I can see the resources on the level of the ordinary people. But uh, talking about political level and organizations, unfortunately, you now these resource is getting less and less. And uh, there is such point. Also, people I mean, 30 year old, they don't speak Georgian any longer, and you are forgetting Russian language. And uh, now the resource is becoming less and less year by year. We have to recognize new realities that there is the Republic of Association and start from fresh, you know. Just we have to start from uh, scratch. Psychologically, we can't, you know, step back. And so we have to start fresh. And uh, uh, now just we want our motherland to develop too. And we understand that we should. Uh, Establish relationships uh, with Georgia, but so far there are no opportunities. You declare just European values, but you're not following, you know. It. But uh, uh, two things that the European environment is the area where uh, Georgia and the nations can coexist. Uh, um, and now I live in South Ossetia and uh, don't get me wrong, it's hard for me to speak about certain things. And uh, it could be accepted as pro-Georgian uh, attitudes. Uh, but if uh, in its time uh, Georgia had recognized South Ossetia, well, just let me say that uh, personally, it's personal about myself, uh, uh, I would see ourselves in the European Union as uh, independent uh, players, independent, you know, just uh, entities and uh, in the Europe where there are no borders. But today we are living in different uh, realities. We have to consider that. Thanks, Tamar, a lot. Uh, you are always welcome. Uh, 
who didn't understand well that we are limited in our opportunities and uh, and they would expect that some decision about conflict resolution just would be taken. Of course, participants are not politicians. The only thing we can do is discuss certain ideas and explore some opportunities. And uh, sometimes we conducted, uh, you know, just parallel uh, analysis and uh, investigations. And uh, results of such investigations are extremely important for politicians to base their decisions. And uh, regarding the political uh, decisions, uh, yes, expectations. What can you say about the expectations of society? Well, in terms of political uh, management, is just to assess the war and military activities, those crimes committed uh, back in early. So expectations to see and to understand the aspirations of the nation, to respect uh, this uh, aspirations that are in Georgian nation too, and uh, sign the just ceasefire and, uh, and now just uh, uh, no war agreement. Uh, there was, you know, of course, wars, and uh, I think that uh, if we sign such uh, uh, just a non resumption, non fire resumption treaty, we would uh, uh, rather just make our life uh, calmer, and that would be the basis. Uh, uh, which would give us hope to uh, speak about the future. But if we just uh, detour that, it would be hard for us you know, to keep on our relationships. We are back at uh, Studio Race 3, Studio Red This is the uh, website of our studio where you can get information and you have just mentioned international organization and you talked about the role of Coburn project and you also just brought about the example of other international actors to what extent important do you think that just international organizations have you know just some importance here I think it's one of the key factors and why uh, I know uh, relationships are easier just if uh, they are conducted under the auspice of international organizations. Uh, if we uh, say, if we mention international organizations, you know, it's easier to get uh, contacts. Uh, this is the first uh, just uh, joint uh, documentary, and the reason associations agreed with uh, cooperation uh, that was due to the international organization that financed the documentary and uh, they thought that in that case the movie would be neutral and more objective. Uh, it is, so uh, I think, important tool for us to find a common language. I would say that Coburn project that you mentioned here is extremely, extremely significant uh, uh, just in terms of efficiency of the project. Uh, we have just executed certain projects, uh, I mean, uh, use dialogue between uh, young Georgian Ossetian and Abkhazian leaders, uh, and uh, we have had a very interesting meetings, uh, and at the same time we talked about our issues. And besides, uh, we have executed very interesting uh, project with uh, International European Center of National Minorities, and uh, the project to involve the large groups of uh, reporters, famous reporters and journalists from Skin Valley, Sukhumi and uh, Tbilisi, I mean from Georgia, all over Georgia. And uh, they were just uh, taken to Cyprus, and uh, uh, the Cyprus uh, example was used uh, at discussion, and together with local politicians and society members, we would discuss such issues, and uh, those discussions were pretty exciting, and things like that are absolutely necessary. As Musmedia is one of the key actors in any conflict, I mean, the way they just uh, highlight to the conflict uh, points, and uh, of course, uh, just uh, spirits of society you know, largely uh, depend on uh, the way mass media work.
You know, first the Cointis, first they started, you know, crazy association started with political slogans, but informally they speak just absolutely the easy, just the ordinary way. And two, three months later, they forgot about that, and again they started with political slogans. Uh, and of course, uh, they are just heavily influenced by those stereotypes. Uh, but these stereotypes are just dominating in our society too. Yes, but to a lesser extent, we discuss more, we are more open. Uh, however, just in Georgia, I also heard, I mean, when we had uh, presidential elections in Abkhazia, it was possible for our reporter to go there and go through the credit, get accredited by Foreign Ministry of Abkhazia. But uh, he was refused by his own TV company, and they just uh, uh, told him, hey, are you gonna go in there to just recognize Abkhazian? So uh, these stereotypes uh, have we here too. Well, it's not just in our local world. It was uh, just official policy just uh, um, during our uh, just uh, previous government. Yes, I made one movie just uh, about refugees, and I needed some shots, uh, some uh, movies just screenshots from the Sukhumi. Everything was closed there, just not any just single relationships, uh, and uh, even one interview is very problematic to get uh, due to their agreement. For example, I remember when Mamuka Kuparadze was uh, just, he was most accepted reporter in Abkhazia. He was there last year, he demonstrated his films in Sukhumi. Uh, it was uh, last year or 2009. It was 2012, then uh, uh, followed a lot of emotions and passions uh, because of his and TV shows and more. What can I uh, say just, uh, well, we are talking about the accreditation of journalists and uh, whether it would be uh, just uh, taken as recognition. But if we were that strict, you know, just any meeting would uh, have been considered just like that. Uh, for example, they count as the meetings, and what passports are they using? So if we take that kind of uh, a rough position, well, we will just hurt our own business. It's definitely so we have to be more open-minded, and uh, we have to be uh, freer, more liberated, uh, and uh, of course, uh, we need uh, support internationally as well, just for uh, civil institutions to be developed. Of course, uh, we need that, but one thing is that international organizations uh, cooperate both with us and with them too. And they're learning our spirits, and uh, they want to see uh, just to get uh, changes here too. Because uh, let's not forget, we have 2004, 2008, uh, 1995, I mean, Kelly events. And, uh, we were involved uh, in inspired conflicts. So, in any case, uh, we have a revanchistic uh, mood here too. And uh, when we declare constitutionally that we want a peaceful resolution, and uh, considering that 2008 we were very excited that we are going to occupy Tsingvala, and that would get us uh, nowhere. So, these processes are. Uh, well observed by international organizations, even better than we may think of. And this is mutually significant, important, and unless we have such support and organizations, uh, there would be no dialogue and no would be no changes in the society. Yes, uh, maybe there's lack of information and communication. And uh, our TV show, which is the first out of the program cycle, financed by European Union and uh, uh, United Nations within the frameworks of the Coburn project, uh, one of the most important projects uh, contributing to a uh, tri tour and uh, uh, relationships between uh, civil organizations uh, uh, through the Abkhazian and Georgian and Abkhazian such relationships. Uh, uh, all the ideas we will let to be expressed uh, and uh, studio raise the responsible for the content of the information 
and uh, our position may not reflect the points of view of the United Nations and uh, um, well, European Union. And we'll kindly ask you to express your ideas at 3 studio.org. Thanks. Uh, just uh, we're awfully thankful for Georgi Hutishvili, Zorabin Dianishvili, and uh, Thomas Chigilishvili for participating in our uh, TV show today. And uh, we will see you next time.